Working with imported geometry from other CAD products can sometimes be difficult due to the lack of history or poor modeling processes. This is where Fusion 360's direct modeling really shines. Here is an example of an imported Pro-E model. As we interrogate the model, you can see that there are extra edges on some of the corner fillets. Also, notice that there are a lot of extra edges in the fillet that goes around the top edge of this model. If we were to machine this, we could potentially see these edges on our finished part due to non-tangent curves. It makes sense for us to clean up this model before manufacturing it. Fusion 360's direct modeling is very powerful, yet there are even times when you will try to do a simple direct edit and it will fail. Here's a prime example. We want to remove these two fillets off of the model to make it one nice continuous fillet. When we select the fillets and try to delete them, notice that it fails and we receive an error message. This is probably due to the odd neighboring fillets. So, how can we resolve this? Let's use a method that I call the wound and heal method. Basically, we are going to remove the problematic areas and let Fusion heal the regions back together. The quickest and easiest way to create the wound is to create a sphere and then subtract it out of the model. To create the wound, we first need to have a construction plane to locate the sphere. We recommend using plane along a path. Select one of the edges near where you want to create the wound and then drag the plane to the end of that edge. Now, using the sphere command, we can place the sphere right where it needs to be. You want to make sure to size the spherical wound to enclose all of the problematic area. Do not leave any small sliver faces. However, don't make it so large that it starts to destroy other areas of your model. Now you can see how the spherical wound has removed all of the problematic area and now we have nice clean boundaries. Let's repeat the procedure on the other side. Now, when we delete the fillets, you can see that it works this time. This is because the spherical wounds created clean boundaries that weren't touching problematic areas. We can also easily delete the wounds by just selecting the single spherical face and selecting Delete. Next, let's take a look at the region at the top of this part. We have a lot of work to do up here, but because it's connected to the rest of this complicated part, any change we try to make could potentially fail. So, instead of creating just a small wound, we're going to amputate this whole region away from the rest of the model. An easy way to do this is to use a profile to split the region away. We will use a simple rectangle in this example. After doing a split body using the rectangle as the splitting tool, you can see that we are left with two separate bodies. Let's go ahead and hide the larger part for now. By working on such a smaller section of the complicated model, we have a better chance of our modification working as Fusion is not having to calculate all of the neighboring faces. The first thing to change is that there are three ribs that are in a weird orientation. One of the ribs looks correct, but the other two are off-center. Let's delete the two ribs that are incorrect. Now, we want to remove the fillets off of the remaining rib, 
but we don't want to have to select all of the fillet faces individually. We can just draw a selection box around the whole rib, then using the shift key, unselect the three faces that define the rib. This way, we are able to select a large selection of faces without having to do it manually. When we complete the delete command, we can see that all of the fillet faces were removed, but the rib stayed in place. The next step is to remove all of the problematic fillets on the top. We obviously don't want to select them individually, so let's look at it from the side and draw a selection box around all of them. However, it also selected the top face, so we can just hold down the shift key to unselect it. With all of the fillets on the top face selected, let's go ahead and delete them. However, notice that we get an error message saying that the fillets cannot be deleted. This seems like it would be a simple direct edit, so why did it not work? Again, it's probably because of issues with the neighboring fillets and faces that's causing Fusion to not understand how to heal those regions. The solution here is to remove as many of the neighboring faces at the same time. So, let's select the top faces again, but this time we'll hold down the shift key and select all of the vertical fillet areas also. Then, we'll add in the large fillets at the bottom using the shift key. When we hit the delete key, all of the fillets are removed all at once. Now we can go back and add the fillets back onto the model. Notice how nice the one millimeter fillet looks on the top edge now. To finish up, we can do a radial pattern on the rib to put them back into the correct location. Finally, we can add the 1mm fillet around the edges of the ribs. So, very quickly we were able to fix all of the problematic areas in this region. The last thing to do is to join the two parts back into one part using the combine join command. So, the wound and heal method is really helpful when working with imported geometry. Let's take a look at another example with this truck grill. It has been determined that the little mounting bracket would be stronger if it was moved to be lined up with one of the existing supporting ribs. This should be a simple move, but notice when we try and move the bracket, Fusion 360 can't do it. This is probably due to poor modeling practices on the imported model. Notice that there is a small sliver face here and extra faces on the front of the model that don't make sense. We can fix that by selecting them and using the delete key. Now that we have fixed this area, let's try the move again. Unfortunately, again, it fails. We're going to have to use our amputation example here. Just draw a simple rectangle around the area we want to work with. We can then use this rectangle as the splitting tool when we split the body. Let's hide the larger part for now. 
Now, let's try the move. Notice that it works this time, because we have separated all of the rest of the problematic model from this section. In this example, we want to move the mounting bracket a very specific distance. However, we don't know what that distance is. We can solve this by projecting the existing geometry and drawing a reference line from the center of the mounting bracket to the center of the rib. Now, when we run the move command, we can select a point-to-point -point move and specify the two points. Notice how the mounting bracket moves the correct distance to be perfectly centered. After turning the other part back on, we can combine the two bodies back into one. So, here you got to see how we were able to fix an imported part with no history tree using direct modeling.